conditions do we think need to be fulfilled for making disease modifying therapies accessible in all regions when and if they do become available? When we talk about uh, disease modifying therapy, especially you know the emerging uh, therapy for Alzheimer's disease uh, treatment, uh, first we have to um, make the diagnosis, which is the key for this uh, uh, disease modifying therapy. And uh, you know, again, uh, we need to uh, make sure they have the these biomarkers which the therapy is targeting at. Uh, that will you know come back to the uh, point uh, of the uh, biomarker uh, assessment. I think is um, uh, we need to start thinking about the infrastructure uh, that we are going to need in order to administer the the treatment, and uh, also the monitoring of the possible adverse events. I am very curious about uh, establishing uh, an infrastructure and logistics to offer the, the treatment to patients. And as Dr. Young said, I think the most important thing will be the diagnosis and to reach wider populations through telemedicine and blood-based biomarkers. I'll throw the line of uh, Resoshi that we need to have accurate diagnosis first of all. And we must stage the disease so that we must know for which stage of the disease these drugs will be available. Coming from a low and middle income country, I think costs will be an important thing. So they must be affordable, and reasonably cheap, or subsidized for low and middle income countries where they will be used. We must have ways of monitoring um, the benefits of these drugs and the unwanted effects as well, so that we can be sure that the benefits outweigh the risks. And as much as possible, those medications must be free of side effects. I think those are the four things that must be fulfilled if we can make disease modifying therapy uh, available in, in all countries of the world. Yeah, I totally agree with uh, Dr. Shi, Dr. Goni, Dr. Abdel Noor. I think they have raised the major uh, points and, and particularly, I, I believe that Brazil and Nigeria uh, are, are, are similar countries in terms of large population, great inequality in terms of uh, uh, socioeconomic level. Uh, and this question of cost is uh, very important. Of course, to, to uh, uh, a new treatment could have many patients in Latin America in general to have access to because we have people who could pay for this. But this is a tiny part of the large number of patients who would benefit and who would, we would like to have benefits from such a drug. So what we need is uh, uh, less expensive and less invasive biomarkers and uh, new treatments with uh, access not so expensive that could be uh, uh, be more affordable both for by the population and and by public health in in general. I think it's very exciting to think about all these things and it's uh, almost. Um... Uh, of course, we need drugs that are easy to give. Also, that's that's an important uh, point. But what we would like to contribute in this uh, to this discussion is uh, I have be become very encouraged by the dry blood spot test for neurofilament light, and I uh, we we are now designing some experiments to see if we could do, do something similar for the beta forty two forty ratio and phosphatau. Because if we have these three markers, then we actually have the possibility in a dry blood spot to, to, to do almost what we could do on CSF. And uh, from a diagnostic perspective, it, it could even replace amyloid PET and uh, tau PET. If we can prove this in the clinical trials that are ongoing, where samples are being collected, that there is a firm link between lowering of phosphatau levels in blood and a treatment benefit uh, in regards to the brain pathology, and also that this uh, predicts a clinical benefit. If that can be more solidified through research, then I think we potentially could have this type of scenario that you uh, diagnose clinically, you have blood biomarker support for underlying pathology, you initiate the treatment on the basis of that information, and you follow the treatment with uh, uh, the same biomarkers to, to detect the normalization of them over time. And if that doesn't happen, then perhaps one needs to increase the dose or, or change to another treatment, or, or it turned out that it was wrong altogether. So that type of uh, future global uh, situation, of course, it, it sounds like a little bit like a dream, but I, re I really think we should strive towards that. Mm -hmm.